Hi, it's Money Talks Media host John Klotz. Welcome back to our segment. We've got our friend Brad Hughes here from Excel Funds, and we are talking emerging markets. Now, before we get into this, we're going to be talking about the BRIC companies, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Always speak with your financial advisor before making any move. We abscond ourselves of any liability. There you go, Brad. That's our caveat. So let's talk these countries. I feel safe now. Exactly. Our lawyers have checked this out, and uh, (laughs) feel free to speak your mind. Um, yeah, really excited about uh, India uh, this year. Um, Why is that? I mean, it's down 15%. It's, yeah, it, it's down maybe 12% now, as they say, after a huge uh, run-up right, today. Right, right, right. Um, I, I think that it's in a very cheap marketplace. Um, some of the inflationary pressures are going to be abated as we look at uh, March uh, crops coming out um, and easing some of the food pressures. Um, I just think that it's the place to be as far as trying to play some catch up with India. And uh, not alone, a lot of people are looking at this overtaking China as the fastest growing market over the next 10, 15 years. Now, that's the whole discussion. Uh, And and it's funny, I have these long-winded discussions with my clients. Who's going to do better, India or China? What's your spin on it? It's not either or. And this is why I personally own the BRIC fund. Um, I rec- recognize my time limitations and, uh, and other limitations and know that I can't pick Russia, Brazil, right. India, China, whichever will outperform year to year. They're different. But I know that if I have the BRIC fund, I'm going to get a um, uh, great representation in all these regions and I'm going to be positive. May not always be the best. Yeah. But I know I'm going to get very strong growth and, in actuality, probably uh, a little less volatility than trying to pick the individual regions. And it's funny. We mentioned the BRIC funds. And if everyone's listening, they're going, the BRIC, that's where I buy my furniture. No. Brazil, Russia, India, China, for anyone who's listening, right? Actually, that's probably where they get their furniture. That's where, <laughs> so. probably where it's manufactured. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. No, I know. Well, let, let's uh, let me ask you about this fund, and it's got some interesting holdings. Um, I mean, it looks like a big part of their holdings are in financial services. So, what's going on there? Um, you know what? The financial services is a very easy play in my mind. Why is uh, that? Well, you know, twenty years ago, you probably didn't go in. Maybe thirty years ago, I don't know what the date is, but you didn't go into universities and colleges across Canada. And there were walls of pre-approved credit applications. Right. Um, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, the banks did things the way they were supposed to here. Um, you know, our, our banking system is better than the U.S. by far. But, yes. you know, I would check on your income levels. And I would lend you money. And I would charge you 6%, whatever that number is. And I would get a deposit from your neighbor and I would pay them 3%. And I would make my 3% spread, whatnot, something along those lines. It was very simple banking business. Um, And that was fine until the bank's growth started to slow down. And they had to find ways to continue to grow at a very quick pace, 20% or whatever that number is year over year. And in order to do that, they had to sort of break their own rules. They started being less uh, less stringent. Um, They started giving credit cards out to, as I said, students who probably don't have a great job, if one at all, no income, and growing debt, expanding debt. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a a place where I want to put my money. No. Uh, Now you go into the emerging economies. Mortgages are an incredibly small part um, as a percentage of GDP in in India. It's probably mortgages represent 5%. In Europe, in (coughs) North America, it's north of 66%, probably closer to 70%. So you can see that they're not using a lot of mortgages. The banks in emerging economies are doing the basic business um, growth story. Mm -hmm. They're lending out money, they're paying it a return on the deposits, and they're they're actually checking your job, uh, checking your income levels. They're going to be getting into the credit card market. They're going to mimic exactly what the banks did here. But right now, um, it's a very simple, low-risk growth story. Low-risk is, is, I think, the key point. I see there's a big chunk in the China Construction Bank Corporation of uh, this particular fund. Obviously, along the, the, along the uh, thread I think that you're it's following st- with. I think it's still accurate today that there's probably more cranes in China than any other country in the world. You know, yeah. you get into Dubai, you get into India, um, and that is a big play on what's taking place within that market. And, you know, the China Construction Bank, one of those things that, uh, you know, are... are 
financing the infrastructure growth. And we know that there's a lot of infrastructure to be built. Roads, power generation. Hospitals. Hospitals, schools, all these yeah, things. Yeah, just all the, everything they need. Um, you're looking at, in 10 years, they want to expand their uh, nuclear power generation by uh, 10 times. You know, from uh, 8 gigawatts to 78 gigawatts. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the cities are growing there very quickly. So a lot of these holdings are going to be very big plays in there. Um, we'll have a company like uh, an ITC in the brick portfolio, um, which... Uh, is a dual sort of class company. Um, it's shifting its efforts from what it once was a tobacco company into uh, travel, a tourism, hotels, and uh, very, very good cash flow. And it now is able to develop and build this other side of the business as they recognize that the world and tobacco are declining. Right. Um, there's Shriam Transport in India, which is a financing company. So in that financial sector again, it has about a 25% market share in, uh, in India. It's got offices throughout, uh, throughout the country and huge barriers to enter this market. Now, when I say it's a, a financing uh, company, it's trucks. It's secondhand or, or used trucks. And companies use this, this uh, Shrim finance to buy the vehicles. Because of some of the lack in the infrastructure, uh, they, the people actually get visits from the Shriam employees. They come out and see you weekly, monthly to get your payment. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and that's why it's such a big barrier for the for people to get in. They have a 25% market share, very profitable, um, and because they are such a big player, they're able to sort of dictate the rates, which means their uh, profit margins are extremely high. Interesting. Um, I noticed with the, with this fund, it's got um, the biggest player in it is, is India. Uh, again, uh, we've been talking about India, and, and I have I have this feeling, although you probably won't admit, that's probably your favorite. Uh, just from what, just just I'm just picking up that is that accurate? Um, uh, it, a bit it, of a bias. It is. Um, yeah. I do. Oh, but you admitted you, it on air. But if you look at the portfolio yeah. and you I'm put Hong Kong and China together, you've yeah. probably got a little bit more than India in the fair portfolio. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and that's and now I noticed there's this amalgamation of these cities uh, in the Pearl Delta Valley. Of uh, have you been following that as well? They want to basically turn it into a big sort of GTA kind of existence. Urban you know? sprawl going yes. mad. Yes. Like, well, I think there's 50 million people within, uh, or some ridiculous number. Within uh, 50 miles of each other? If, if you just look at a couple of the cities there with, you know, 13, 15 million in one city, yeah. you add the urban sprawl. It's not a big uh, stretch. Um, the owner of the company, Bemis Deer, was traveling in China on one of the high-speed trains. And uh, he said, you know, you would leave sort of the big city, but all along the way you would see the smaller cities all along the horizon with office towers and, and yeah. the apartment buildings being uh, built up. And it does, it, it's quite an urban sprawl, if you will. And the interesting thing, China is sitting on so much cash. I mean, they're, they, during the recession, and I, I think we're still in one here, whatever anyone says, but during the uh, recession, they were funding, you know, $20 billion a month of infrastructure programs. And, uh, and some people look at that negatively and go, well, they've built roads that aren't being used or they've built houses yeah. that aren't being used. Um, they have done it differently than us, but what they did is they used their cash prudently, in my yep. mind, and they built things that are going to be needed very quickly yep. um, and very soon in the near future, uh, rather than make work projects right. just to keep the economy moving forward. Right. So they're going to be able to move in people, um, yep. businesses into these places very quickly. Um, India was another spot. It didn't need as much um, uh, uh, stimulus. Because, again, they were growing positively. They weren't impacted economically by what took place in the subprime. Very little exposure. But they had to sort of keep it going because foreigner dollars weren't coming in. Exactly. Uh, now, I noticed I didn't see um, the Tata on here on, this, on the list of investments. Um, but I know uh, last time I was here, you did talk about uh, the fact they've come out with a three-wheeler, basically. Uh, the car. No, no, four-wheeler. Four -wheeler, but three, there's something. Nano is the terminology. It was about $2,500. I think it's that's about... That's it. That's right. That's right. It's about $2,700 U.S. right yeah. now. Um, Tata you, is part of the portfolio. Right. Not, not this... Is it part of this portfolio? I, it I don't would see it, just not okay. be in the top 10. Not be in the top 10. Fair um, enough. Yeah. So we, we typically have in our portfolio something like Tata Motors will be in there uh, uh, in perpetuity, really. Okay. Um, you know, at some point in time that may change, but... Uh, would you yeah. drive one? Um, probably not. <laughs> I, I've got a little problem with headroom. Uh, 
All but, right. But, you know, the, the Indian population migrating yeah. from two-wheelers, uh, you know, um, into this car, it's a great entry-level vehicle. They right. build brand recognition because Tata builds a plethora of models, including higher-end luxury cars. Um, so, yeah, Tata's a great story. It's had some problems recently, um, as the whole Indian economy has done. It came off quite sharply, but uh, looking at some of the Tata uh, stock last week, made a huge recovery near the end of the week. So nice. great story still, and uh, yeah, it's going to be okay. a, a mainstay in India for quite some time. All right, Brad, we appreciate you coming out. Any last comments about, firstly, how they get a, people find out about your funds uh, and where they can go to get you? www.excelfunds.com. Great place to start. Talk to your financial advisor. If you don't have one, definitely speak to John. Uh, he'll be able to help you out and lead you. This is RSP season, so uh, make sure you get out and, and contribute as much as you can and uh, ask about the TFSA as well. Fantastic. We've had Brad Hughes... Uh, senior manager at uh, Excel Funds. That's not true. Sales manager. Regional Excel. sales Regional manager. Regional sales manager. I know you so well, Brad. Your authority anyway, in emerging markets. Exactly. Excel authority funds. in emerging markets. <laughs> we appreciate you listening. Again, speak with your financial advisor before you make any moves. This is Money Talks Media. We're going off the air. We'll see you back here in two weeks' time. Have a great Valentine's Day.